Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's 2 p.m. We are scheduled to begin, uh, but I think we'll give a few minutes just to try and get more people to join. I think people are still trying to join. Hello, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Well, afternoon if you're on this side of the world. Um, good morning or good evening, depending on where you are. Um, welcome to the webinar series put together by the Tony Ogamillo Foundation. Um, today's topic is going to be around transformative partnerships for business growth. Now, um, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Deomi Alugmi. I am the Partnerships Manager for the Foundation. And um, 
this forms part of our programming. Um, as we know, COVID-19 has affected a lot of the way we would typically work, the sort of programming and events and activities we would engage in. But we still felt it was it was quite important to continue connecting with entrepreneurs across the ecosystem and to share learnings and tidbits and still be available um, essentially for questions to be able to connect with those of you who took your time out this afternoon to join us. So thank you very much. Um, I think we've given it about five minutes. We're going to go ahead and start. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and start. Again, thank you for joining us this afternoon at this Tony Lumelu Foundation webinar, which is focused on transformative partnerships for business growth. So again, just to put a face to the voice and maybe the emails some of you may get, who am I? My name is Deomi Alubwe again. I'm the Partnerships Manager for TEF. Um, a little bit of my background, I have spent many years in the development space. In fact, before I joined um, the foundation a few years ago, I was at the Commonwealth Office to the United Nations in New York, and I moved back to the continent, so to say, um, because I, I, I'm an Afro-capitalist at heart. If you are familiar with the foundation, you should be familiar with um, the premise of Afro-capitalism, you know, where we, we believe whole, wholly that the private sector holds the key to the development of the African continent. And because of that, we support entrepreneurs who are participating in the private sector across entire value chains, um, small and medium and micro size entrepreneurs. They contribute their quota to the development of Africa. And being that I am that Africa capitalist at heart, naturally I'd be passionate about entrepreneurship. I myself am an entrepreneur. I have, you know, I've had different businesses and different ideas and I've run the businesses in different parts of the world. Being in the position that I am now, I definitely have, you know, the background to know what has helped me in my personal businesses and in connecting with our entrepreneurs. We have an idea also what works for entrepreneurs and hopefully we can um, discuss a little bit of that today. So about this webinar, what the essence is we're trying to do an interactive style with plenty of question and answer time um, make it less of a lecture so if you go ahead and type your questions um in um it will be collated and at the end of the presentation there'll be plenty of question and answer time where i can respond to the presentation um so any questions you have about the presentation um the best way we can but for this particular presentation, um, for this section of it, we will cover the following areas. I'm going to talk through it kind of slowly in case there are people taking notes. Um, this is the table of contents. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about what is a partner really and what is a what is partnership? Because I know you hear it a lot, partnerships, partnerships, but what exactly is it? Um, and what is it not? We're gonna talk about the types of partnerships that are out there. We're going to talk about just broadly high level um, so that if there are any deeper questions you have, you can research those specific areas and find out more. But this is really an introductory course. Um, we're going to move on to the legal considerations. Uh, just again, very broadly high level, just to have you thinking and understanding partnerships and its role in business. Um, and also some of the legal things you should consider before you engage in any partnership. So you know you're covered on all sides. We'll move on into types of partnerships for you. Now this webinar is geared at MSMEs, SMEs, who really are not engaging in, let's say, super high level partnerships between two countries. So we're going to also cover specifically the type of partnerships you as an MSME or SME within particularly these times we're in this um, COVID era. What kind of partnerships, you know, what type of partnerships are for you? 
then we will focus on partnerships in different sectors. So just an example to kind of put it into practice, what kind of partnerships should you be looking at depending on the sectors you're in? So we're covering um, four sectors today, Agric, ICT, which is Agric, meaning agricultural and the whole value chain in agriculture, ICT, tech, fashion, and financial services. Um, then we'll move into the Q&A section. So to get started, what is a partner and what is partnership? So um, essentially, a partner can mean so many different things. If it's a, it's a personal relationship, we know what a partner means there. But if it's in a law firm or a tech company or even an international organization, a partner represents different things. But every time they come together, every time individuals, two or more parties come together and agree to cooperate to advance a mutual interest, they've entered a partnership. Now this partnership could be formal or informal, but at the point where two or more people say, we want to work on this thing together for this joint goal, that's a partnership. And they are now in fact partners to each other for that goal. So this means when these two people are discussing how they want to work together, the different things they can partner on. They can partner on how to manage the business. They can talk about just how to operate the business. It can be just operations partners. They can promote the business. You can have somebody that is just a promotional partner. And um, you can share business risk. That's another type of partnership where you're only sharing certain risk and reward. So there's some partnerships that based on the risk you're sending, you're sharing, your reward is also equal to that risk. But essentially, just to help you understand that when people say, oh, you are my partner in this, you should understand that you have jointly agreed to manage, operate, promote, or share your risk and profits with someone. So before you say, I am a partner too, you have to understand what you are signing up for. Now, we're gonna talk about just broadly again, the general types of partnerships you may hear about out there. And there's so many different types based on what we just covered, um, whether you're going to share your liabilities and your profits, um, who is going to carry the bulk of that, you know, so we're just gonna cover four major areas. General partnership. In general partnerships, all the partners are personally and jointly liable for the organization or the firm's debts and liabilities. So when you enter a general partnership with someone, there is a point where your agreement will say together you're working together you're working to a goal. If anything goes wrong, because you're jointly sharing the liability, you're also jointly sharing the profit. Don't forget the liability part of the profit. So if anything goes wrong, you are responsible for it as a business and personally. That's a general partnership. There's um, something else called the limited partnership. One partner has the li unlimited liability. Now this means that the partner, usually the founding partner, bears most of the liability because it's probably their brain idea to start with. And then they bring on different partners to do different things. So these other partners, they may not carry as much liability as the founding partner, right? So these other partners, and it's usually tied to the sort of reward. So if the founding partner is going to take home 80% of the profits and the partners that they brought on are only getting 20%, it only makes sense that the founding partner as they're securing 80% of the profit, they should also get 80% of the liability. A third major area is a limited liability partnership. Now this is the most popular one because it protects personal assets. So if a business partnership fails or doesn't take off or the business itself fails, you know, your personal assets cannot be used to recover any debt. So it's the business that then takes the hit. The business is the one that whose credit or credibility will be damaged in terms of partnership, not the individual partners. Now, this doesn't have, this doesn't speak to 
who takes the most um, profit or anything like that. No, it just limits the liability of the individual in engaging in a partnership. Most places you will hear LLC, and that's the most common type of people form because you don't want to take personal liability for a business or business decision. Uh, the fourth one that, so these are again, very broad areas that I'm sure you've heard about, just to let you know that all these different things are considered partnerships as well. Um, the public-private partnership. This is when a government agency and a private sector company come together to work, usually on a major development project, maybe a bridge or, you know, toll gates or, you know, express roads. But it's also another type of partnership where it's a developmental sort of partnership. This again, by entering into it, the specifics of your agreement will determine your risk, your profit sharing, ETC. But these are the broad areas of um, partnership. Let's move on. So before, while we've covered the broad areas of partnerships, Again, none of these broad areas immediately speak to any legal considerations, any profit sharing. So it would be really important that we just touch on some considerations around it. So regardless of the type of partnership you enter into as an entrepreneur, because it can be formed, it can be formal, it can be informal. There's some partnerships you engage in that you don't actually have to file documents with any business bureau, you don't have to file any legal documents, but you have an agreement guiding you. So every partnership you engage in, whether formal or informal, should absolutely have an agreement guiding it, and that protects you legally should anything go wrong. And that agreement, I've listed out the things that absolutely need to be included in it for your own protection as an entrepreneur. The name and the location of the business. You need to have that in your agreement. The name and address of each partner and their contribution to the business. This means the rights and responsibilities and duties of each partner. So in the agreement, you know who is responsible for what. You also know how the partners intend to allocate the company's profits and losses. So when you do discuss in your agreement that we're going to do profit sharing 50-50, you actually have to also put in that any loss, any liability will also be shared in this way. The um, fifth area is that it also needs to specify the authority of each partner in respect to the company's affairs. So if you're coming together and somebody is joining you in your existing company, just because they're your partner doesn't mean they can then go enter into contracts on your behalf. Your document, your guiding agreement should say what they can do on behalf of the organization. Who has access to um, the bank statement, your bank accounts, your finances, who can discuss financial things on behalf of the organization. And all this would, would not be an issue if the responsibility and duty of each partner is clearly spelled out in this agreement. And should there be any issues regarding duties, responsibility, contribution, your agreement should also spell out the process you will use to resolve any disagreement so that within your agreement, you know if the person that you brought on board to help you with X, Y, Z doesn't deliver, this is how you take the steps to either encourage them to deliver or to dissolve the partnership. And this allows you to be able to make business decisions without sentiments. It allows you to be able to objectively look at any partnership you are entering into or you are currently in and be able to decide based on the agreement you sign, is it meeting the objectives and be able to walk away. Whether your partnership is with your uncle, auntie, friend, cousin, always have an agreement that guides exactly what you want to do. So this moves us to the section where because this webinar is geared more at our SMEs and MSMEs, what type of partnerships should you be looking at? Clearly, we're not going to discuss a public-private partnership to build a bridge <laughs> for you on this call. So we'd like to talk about, first of all, company partnerships. 
This means that your company is partnering with another company and developing your relationship so that you can tap into their already existing relationship and vice versa. So you're on your WhatsApp group for entrepreneurs, you're on TF Connect um, hub to discuss, and you notice somebody who is doing a complementary program or complementary business to yours, you can form a partnership at company level with them where both of you are going to be able to reach each other's um, customers. For the entrepreneurs that are listening to this, essentially you also need accounting and advisory partnerships. I cannot overestimate, I cannot overstate how important it is for every business to have their books in order. In order to scale, move to the next level, secure funding for your next stage, whoever is looking at you needs to know that you are responsible with your finances and you've judiciously used any previous monies you've gotten, either as a grant or as a loan, that you've made good, you've built business credit. And part of that is having your books tight is making sure your accounting, your PNL, everything that has to do with your business is on point. A lot of MSMEs and even myself, I don't, I'm not an accountant. I don't know anything about accounting, which is where partnerships with an accounting firm is important for all the small businesses that are on this, on this webinar today. Um, just being a part of the TEF network, you have access to existing businesses who as entrepreneurs, these are their businesses. This is what they do. Um, our alumni network has reduced cost, you know, advisory services and accounting services. So there's no reason anyone should not be looking to partner with a firm that would help take the responsibility for this so that you can focus on the business that generates the money. Look for partnerships to help push your business forward. The third um, type of partnership that would work for our MSMEs and SMEs are leadership and peer mentors. Now, a mentor is there to give you advice designed to help you avoid the mistakes they may have encountered in the past and successfully overcome. One of the, the, the important things to know is that you don't want to repeat the cycle. You don't want to replicate what has already been done in the past. So you need to leverage and lean on anybody that you know can help you. Again, if you're on the TF Connect um, platform, you know you have access to mentors. Even within the mentorship you know, framework, you have access to peer mentors because your mentor doesn't always have to be an older person. They just need to be a more seasoned business person. So somebody who is your age mate could actually be your business senior and you can learn from their experience. So those again are the type of partnerships that entrepreneurs at this stage and level should be looking to secure. Next is the promotions or referral partners partnership. So these partnerships are the ones that drive instant sales and revenue to your business um, when they're reciprocal, obviously, and they can turn into long term partnerships. What does this mean? This means you can sign a partnership that is essentially just a promotions partnership, meaning you will give me this service in my business and I will blast your business publicly. Both of you are going to benefit. So if for instance, you are discussing with an accounting firm and you are a major media, digital media business, and you say, look, do the accounting for my business for me and I will do a social media strategy plan for you and blast your business and help you get more customers. That is the sort of partnership that we should be looking to engage in. It's essentially a butter. You give up something you're already doing for something they are doing and everybody is happy. Finally, the type of partnerships that can work for MSME it's similar to what I just discussed, brand supporters. So instead of having a, an accounting business and a, and a social media and marketing company partnering, this would be an individual who believes in your product. This individual is just somebody who knows you have a great service or a great product 
and you have excellent customer service and they're a loyal brand supporter, you then engage them. And this individual now becomes essentially your ambassador. They become the people that is telling everybody about your business and service. So those are the five types of partnerships that MSMEs and SMEs should be thinking about in order to scale to the next level to grow and to survive in this um, COVID period. Now, I know we're running, <laughs> the time is, is, where did the time go? But I want to quickly cover essentially the partnerships for different sectors, how we should look. Yes, I explained the different types of partnerships in the previous slide. I also believe that we can actually, for the four sectors that are highlighted on the screen, we can discuss exactly what type of how partnerships should or could look. Now, this is not limited to just what is on the screen. Partnerships are open to creative interpretation. There's so many ways people can partner together to accomplish their goals. These are just very few ideas from my own mind. In fact, it was partnership with another partnership executive, um, a colleague of mine, that we threw around some of these ideas that we put it together. So please, just um, for the farming and agri sector, anybody that's in agriculture right now and they're doing farming, essentially you're faced with the, with the concern that you're producing all this farm. Now, this advice even extends beyond this period because we need to understand that people's buying patterns, everything will change. The people who used to um, do things a certain way, this lockdown period has forced them to understand that they can do it either by employing technology or by you know, outsourcing it. So we're gonna find that after the lockdown is over and we have um, successfully moved beyond the um, coronavirus pandemic, buying patterns, supply chains, everything will have changed. So this advice here is something that you can take from it what you can to apply for now and for the future. So for farming and agriculture, um, farmers need or people who produce agricultural goods, you need to move more towards online sales right now. So in, in the sense of partnerships, when you're now partnering, for instance, with a tech company who will build your social media, build your webinar, build your web presence, build a website for you, you need to start pushing online sales. Now, how do you get around the fact that, oh, there's a lockdown? You have a designated pickup point where everything you harvest on the farm, you can partner with a local business to set up a kiosk in front of their business to say you can pick up here. That local business could be somebody who sells another essential, like a water refill. So people are going to go to buy their, their water. They might as well see a stand of fruits and veggies. So you should be looking for people who have essential services that are pick up that you can socially distance and set up a pickup point there. You can partner with a logistics company who's offering, you know, community drop offs. So the logistics company will say we're going to pick up from the farm and we're going to deliver to this country, this, this city on this day and this time. Pre order what you need and we'll get it to you. Partner with the logistics company means the clients that buy your fruits and vegetables or your food products pay for delivery. So you're not paying for the delivery, they're paying for the delivery of their products. So in a sense, this partnership not only helps you sell your goods and services, it helps the logistics company get a job. It helps them get a job to be able to do their own drop-offs, home delivery, or even pickups from the farm. Always passing on the cost, expanding your, your, your customer base. Moving on to ICT and technology. This is a really good time for anybody who's in technology to develop digital platforms and apps that A, support this. For instance, the agricultural entrepreneur who has food, the ICT entrepreneur can help them develop a marketplace for them to sell the food. Whether you want to pay them in fruits and veggies, you can do that. But by helping your agricultural colleague in partnering with them develop 
a portal to sell more, they will be able to have the cash flow to pay for your services. So essentially, we need to think about ourselves as part of an entire ecosystem, part of an entire value chain, where if you provide something to somebody on your left, they would then be able to generate the income to pay you for those same services. So developing apps that help keep people informed. Now you can work with hospitals, you can work with um, tracking centers, um, to even gather information and get public participation, you can work with, with just develop, keep honing your own skill, develop a portfolio where you are useful to the people who are thriving now. A lot of people are going to start, you know, starting logistics companies that they need contactless payment solutions. They need digital apps. This is the time for you to start marketing and looking to partner with people. If you pay me this reduced amount to set this up, we can partner and on the back end when your business picks up, you increase my 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 amount or I am now retained. I'm on retainer with you. So we have to always think very creatively about now and the future. Um, next thing are financial services. Again, I spoke about this because it's so important that even when you're starting new businesses in this period, you need to make sure you're on the right side of all regulatory compliance issues so that after the period you are able to continue in your business, that you haven't flouted any laws. So this would be the time to make sure that as you are all of a sudden as a logistics company, all of a sudden your business has boomed 110 percent. You need to make sure your accounting is on point. Financial services people, this is an opportunity for you to start partnering with people that you notice are now handling more than previous. This is an opportunity for you to start reaching out to entrepreneurs that again, you know in your network will need your services. You have to now start investing in yourself, putting yourself out there and looking for the types of partnerships that your skill and your business can garner for you. For this, you can batter your services for essential. If somebody is running a supermarket, rather than looking to do books, do the accounting for someone, for them to pay you in order to buy food, why not cut a straight line to the person and say, I will do the books for you for this month if you send me these items, food that's worth this amount. So that, those are the sort of creative ways you have to start. We have to go back to thinking, what do I have that I can offer someone so we both can be happy and well positioned at the end. Now for fashion um, sector, this is the time for you to amplify your dig digital presence and push your online sales. Where the world is headed, we're headed towards a digital future. Everybody must participate online. This is a perfect time to start getting comfortable with it. There are no distractions um, on ground. There's nobody coming in and out of your store or anywhere. So you can really stay and focus on how to position yourselves digitally now so that post this period, you are you have the visibility you want. This is the time for you to partner with um, a local logistics company again and offer home delivery of your stock of your services. You can partner with you can now do the brand loyalists, the people who know you well and you say, listen, I will give you these clothing that has been curated for home work at home stay. If you promote our business that will generate sales. You know, so these are the sort of partnerships we should be looking at for these um, specific areas. Now, like I said, this is absolutely not exhaustive. Partnerships are meant for two people or two companies to come together and be creative about how they engage. Part of it is understanding what do you have to offer. Once you know what you have to offer as a business, as an organization, you can go into any partnerships conversation and say, I have this to offer, this is what I want. And more likely than not, they will also say, yes, I want that thing you have to offer and this is what I have to offer. And then you work out your partnership agreement <laughs> from there and then you move forward. So just to wrap it up so we can open it up to the q and I think I've seen um, maybe like 10 questions have come in so far. Um, 
just a final word. Right now, no business can survive without cash flow. So right now, it is best that you cut all your expenses to the bare minimum, bare operational minimum. So if you do not need your, I'm not even going to say, <laughs> you know what it is. You know what it is that you don't need. You cut it down to the bare operational minimum, and then you seek partnerships that will increase your cash flow. So that your once you keep your costs, below your your input below your output or how, how do the accountants say it like i'm not an accountant you will do you would you would you would do better in this period where we know cash is slow all around so the question that as final words you as the entrepreneur that's listening to this where do you start well the first thing is to have a a, a self understand what do you have to offer know what you have to offer and then identify what do you want when you know what you have to offer it's easier to find the people who are looking for what you want so once you say i have these things to offer this is what i want you can visit cfconnect.com for instance and on there you connect to other entrepreneurs who also know what they have to offer and know what they want in return so if what you have to offer and what you want it can very well match up with somebody else on the platform who is offering what you want and in return they're going to accept what you have to offer so again you have to be creative you know the people who are in your space you know what you would like to work with shoot your shots just do what you have to do um but definitely tf connect www.tfconnect.com is the perfect place to start to start connecting with people where you can start developing creative partnerships. So creating the right partnerships for your business, it can help you accelerate your growth. That is the final word I want you to take away from um, this our webinar. We have come to the end of the webinar. Um, thank you very much for your attention throughout this period. Um, we're gonna move on to the Q&A um section of the webinar and we've essentially gotten a list of many many questions so we're just going to read i'm just going to read them and answer them so the first question comes and i think this is in the manufacturing sector so i'll try to mention what sector it is and the question is how do i grow a business when the required machines and materials are grossly inadequate. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to answer that in two ways because there's gross inadequacy and then there's unavailability. So just so that anybody in the manufacturing sector who may have this question, I'll answer that. You started a business and the machines that and materials you required are either inadequate or unavailable. How do you grow the business? This is the perfect opportunity for a partnership. Therefore, you know who the other competitors in your space are. You might want to approach one of them to pull your funds, pull your resources in order to satisfy the demand. Because one thing we know about the African continent, the demand is for anything being produced, any manufacturing. The demand is that the market is huge. So this might be an opportunity to approach um, other players in the in the same industry to see if you can either pull your funds to access the adequate required machines or materials or use or leverage or utilize their existing machinery or materials. Uh, the second question is. Hello, madam. <laughs> Do we need to have partners who don't have shares within our companies? That's the first part of the question. You can have informal partnerships where the people do not have shares in your company. It's about what you're giving them in return. Some partners may demand or may, may want shares in your company because the company is so is doing so well. The company is so wonderful. It's up for negotiation. It is not mandatory that you give a percentage of your company for anybody. If you've watched those shows like Shark Tank, 
and if you watch all those shows, you know that you make a pitch. This is my company. This is what I believe about the company. And somebody can say, I want shares for your company to partner. If you don't want to give up the shares, you don't. But I will say as a caveat, which then covers your second question. Giving people ownership in your company commits them to the company in the sense that they are committed to the success of the company. If you own 10% of said company and the company needs certain resources or certain some sort of attention, you would be keen to work together to get the resources the company needs because this is part of your portfolio. The other angle is if this partner is essentially just if you, you have to find partnerships where it's a mutually guaranteed success. Mutual, meaning both of you benefit if the company does well. Once you have that, whether it's backed up by giving them shares or it's just a verbal agreement or it's a written agreement. Find partners who are equally committed to your organization and you would not have to worry about their level of, of commitment. The third question is, as a startup, how can I forge partnerships with successful entrepreneurs like Tony Lumelu? <laughs> how can I partner with successful businesses and big multinational companies? As a startup, what is your value proposition? Now, successful entrepreneurs like Tony Lumelu and um, Richard <laughs> Branson and all the major people, they are just because they look at ideas and they decide if it's if the value proposition is high enough, they would invest in it. So when you see a successful person, they have taken the time to know the industry, study the industry. What is your value proposition as an entrepreneur? What are you doing that hasn't been done before or you're doing so differently that a big time entrepreneur like Tony Lumelu or the Richard Branson's of the world will not be able to pass up your opportunity. So it's not a simple question of how do I get them to partner with me? Finding partners when you have an amazing product, great customer service, and you are positioned to really take, take up and shoot for the moon, finding partners will be easy. In fact, people will be coming to you saying, I want, I want, I want to be part of it. So go back to your own value proposition. Make sure what you're offering as a startup is absolutely the juiciest, the best thing you can offer and you will find those major partnerships will come to you. Question four, what are the keys to know in order to find the right partners despite the obvious shared goals and visions? In order to find the right partner, honestly, you have to do some research. Um, you have to look at the potential partners, trends, their behaviors, for instance, do you want you want to research who you're looking to partner with beyond their visions and their goals that they put on their website? What is their action about? Have they been part of other organizations that they were actively working for? Or did they buy into the organization and then sell it within two minutes and then move on to another one? You need to make sure your ultimate goals and visions are aligned. And a lot of that comes with research. It comes with interviewing and getting to know your potential business partner. You have to look at a business partnership like a marriage. It is so important that you vet the person, their goal, their intentions, their trajectory. If you are currently running, you're running a farm in, in, in on the continent and you bring on an operations partner who part of their tasks every day is to go to the farm, make sure the seedlings are growing and then you find out that they're actually currently filing to move to Canada. That is a mismatch. So essentially, you can't match up. You can't just look at their mission and vision at this point. You should get to know them long enough to know their long term plans. Now, this is if we're thinking deep company partnership or we're thinking we're founding a business with them. If you're doing just a promotions partnership, it is tied to a specific target and goal. If you put my business on your platform, I will give you X, Y, Z. That one, you don't need to know if they're moving to Canada because they can put your business on platform anywhere. But if you're going to jointly form a, a partnership with someone to do a business, 
you need to understand and know them the same way you would look at a spouse. Excuse me. Um, um, question number five, why do co-founders fail in the early stages? I think tying to the previous um, question, a lot of co-founders fail in the early stages because they do not have a shared vision and mission. They have not actually agreed what the objective is and how they're going to get there. They did not properly define who will do what. So if, for instance, you're working with somebody who's more, um, who's more laid back than you are, you might get to a point where you might assume they're just being lazy, but they're not, they're just laid back. So you need to understand, again, the way I said, the way you vet a potential spouse, you vet a potential business partner that way. The same way you make allowances for a potential spouse. OK, this person, you know, likes to do this. Me, I don't. Let's work. You will make the same consideration for your potential partner. And from those early stages, you will know who has what strength and you will defer to that person on that strength so that you can move the business forward. After understanding that you both agree on the ultimate goal and how you plan to get there. So it says, please expand on the term Afrocapitalism. So for those who may not be aware, um, you can Google it, but because it's part of what we do here at the foundation, I will be glad to share what Afrocapitalism is. Essentially, Afrocapitalism is the economic theory, I want to say the theory that was created by the founder, Tony Lumelu, that says that the private sector is the key to development in Africa. Now, this um, is juxtaposed to people who say, oh, you know, give charity or is the government that will develop Africa. The founder believes that it's African capitalism, the work that the private sector is doing, um, the power that the private sector has, to change policy, change government, drive positioning is what would change Africa. It's not going to be charity, it's not going to be loans, it's not going to be anything. It's going to be entrepreneurs like you and I, entrepreneurs like, you know, across Africa, doing their part to contribute to the quota, to development in that country. If you 